Hi folks. We're going to look at this image and uh, I want to show you how I processed it. The This is the original image that I started with. This is what we're hoping to uh, move towards. The original image here is too dark in this area. I want to get a lot more shadow detail up. I need to go in and retouch out this piece of foam you know, from the pollution in the water. So those are some of the things I want to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through Nix FX HDR FX. And we can see how that's done most of what I wanted to do. It's opened it up. It's given me a lot more highlight detail. I retouched this out using the cloning tool. So this is the first one for this particular image is to use that FX filter to open things up. It's actually for dynamic range, but I find it's a great way to work almost, it improves almost every photograph I use it on. You just have to be careful how much you use it. In the setting up of this image, I intentionally brought the flow of the water in out of this corner, had it go across the page and exit out of this corner. And I wanted the stream to spread out and fill the frame as it came in. Now there's another diagonal working in this image which is coming across this way. I wanted to maintain that diagonal as well so I made sure when I set my camera up I was high enough so I could see over these rocks in here to, to have that become part of the image. But now I want to place more emphasis here because this is sort of dead space and it isn't really adding anything to the photograph. So what we're going to do next is we're going to try and fix that. So the first thing I did was run this through Simplify using the Painter 2 adjustment. And what this did is it knocked down a lot of the unnecessary detail in the image. If, you, if we go back to this, we can see that we've got all of this stuff on the rocks. And it's there, but it's distracting. So I use this to push that down and get more even blocks of color in there. Now there isn't quite enough detail in there for me so what I do is I just change the opacity between those two layers until I come up with what I want and this is what I want. So you can see this is what I had, this is what I started with and this is what I ended up with. So now I have all the detail in the image but I don't have any of the really fine distracting detail. I have all the detail I want. Now we have to deal with how do I diminish the power of this area of the image. I decided that I would use the DaVinci Sketch 2 impressions to use this. So I made a duplicate layer because we never want to do any work on our original layer. And now I'm going to go in and show you how I take this to this. So we're going to go into Topaz, we're going to go down to Impressions, and this is the DaVinci Sketch Mode. Now you can see here it's in color, that's because it's showing all of my previewed adjustments now. So what we're going to click in it as if I hadn't done anything. And this is what you get. This is a great little application because it allows you to place emphasis in the image where you want it to be and for other areas the image to fade off which I think is a great tool. So I'm going to click on the inside and up here we have our brush settings. I'm going to reduce the strength of this a little bit. And you see how the lines get much sketchier? Then I'm going to increase the stroke width and the line length. And then I'm going to come back up here and play with this. I like doing this adjustment before I take it back to color because it's actually easier to see what's happening in black and white. So I got that pretty much where I want it to be. Now I'm going to scroll down. And right here, we, well, we'll come back up to that. We'll do the color first. I've got this set up now so that I have all three of these visible. I'm going to take, the reason why it's black and white is that the saturation layer has been put all the way down. All we have to do is bring that back up to reveal the color. 
And then we can come down here and play with our brightness and our contrast to get the color where we want it to be. I'm going to scroll up some. On the vignette here, we can control where this area of visibility is in the picture by just picking this up and moving it. So I can bring it closer to the, where I want the information to be revealed. And now we can see the other area falls off. Now we control the size of that by adjusting these sliders. Okay. And if we come back up here, we have further adjustment by doing the coverage. So we can control exactly how much detail that we, re we reveal in these other areas. So you just have to keep playing with it until you get it where you want it to be. Now in this case, we can also move this one over. So again, now you can see how much that fades off in the other area. So you can control where the center of your, your blending area starts from by moving that. Now I'm going to go back up and take my stroke width down a little bit because I want a real sketchy look. Now you can see how we get a sketchy look. Now, underpainting is really important when you use this particular mode. If you come all the way down to the bottom here and you go to background, you can change what the underpainting is. And that will make the image much more dynamic when you use a warmer color, such as orange. But now that I've seen that, I think I want to have a little bit more coverage. So I'm going to go back up to coverage, open that up some more. And now we can see how we got this nice, sketchy look. The real emphasis is placed here. We still have some stuff happening back here that's interesting. So now we just say, OK. Just like we did before, I don't want it to look just like this. What I want it to look like is something between that and between this. So what I do is I go on up to my opacity or my fill. I don't see any difference in which one you use. And I'm just going to bring some of the stuff in from the lower layer. So now, rather than that, we have this. And this is, a, this is another variation. I actually prefer this one. And then we would just do our contrast adjustments. This is something you almost always have to do as soon as you do one of these. You bring it in here. And we want to make sure we get the pop. So we bring this up and see until we don't, we don't, we can bring it up as high as you want until we see detail start to disappear in the highlights. If I go too far, you see how the details are lost? So I want to bring it back. And then you can adjust the contrast. Get it right where you want it to be. Now we have a powerful image. Naturally drops off as it gets close to the edge. We have this coming in. We turn that off, turn it back on. So this is what we ended up with. I'm going to merge that. Hold down If you hold down the Option key, and you go on up here, and you do Merge Visible, all it does is actually merge the one that you are on with the ones beneath it. So we now have that. We can shut these off. And now we can say, OK. This is what we started with. This is what we ended up with. Now, after looking at that, I think I would probably go in and still give it a little bit more contrast to try and pop those blacks up a bit. Well, folks, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit the like button on the YouTube for me and let me know what you think. Thank you.